Hallelujah. Thank you so much. Joy praise. Thank you for that song. It was exactly what I needed. Before you take your seats, I just want to go straight into the scripture while you're standing. Turn with me to Ecclesiastes chapter 9 and verse 11. I'm going to read from the King James Version. And it says, I returned and saw under the sun that the race is not to the swift, nor the battle to the strong, neither yet bread to the wise, nor yet riches to men of understanding, nor yet favor to men of skill, but time and chance happeneth to them all. Father God, we thank you for your move. God, this is your moment to speak to us. This is our moment to receive from you. God, I tap into you right now. I tap into your strength. I tap in to your wisdom and your boldness. Father God, I know that though I stand here today, I am but a vessel that you have chosen to use in this moment. I pray that with whatever is said at the end of it all, that your voice is the one that is heard, that you are the one that they receive into their spirit. Right now, in the name of Jesus, I break up every fallow ground and I set this atmosphere that it be conducive to the move of your Holy Spirit, that nothing will hinder and nothing will block the purpose that you had for this word today. Let every ear and every heart receive what you have in store for us today because I too need to hear from you. As you prepare us, we thank you for your presence in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may take your seats. My message title today is Opportunity to Overflow. Now, the book of Ecclesiastes is believed to be written by King Solomon, David's son. And I believe what Solomon was complaining about here was the futility of life. I recall a true story of a champion sprinter, Derek Redman, from England, who was widely favored to win a gold medal at the 1992 Games in Barcelona. He had one of the most memorable moments in Olympic history, but it wasn't for winning his race. It was when his father, Jim Redman, leaped into, leaped onto the tracks to help his injured son, Derek, make his way across the finish line of the 400-meter men's race. Because you see, in life, things aren't always how they should be. Now, we might be gifted in certain areas, and naturally, the expectation is for us to win in that arena, but nothing in life is guaranteed. Around the end of verse, of the scripture that we read, there is a shift that takes place from the power of human ability to the things that we cannot control, time and chance. 
if you've been following us this month, you realize from the certain woman in 2 Kings chapter 4, verses 1 to 7, to Abigail in 1 Samuel 25, to the well-to-do woman in 2 Kings 4, chapter, uh, verse 8 to 37, and beyond to all the amaz amazing women in the Bible like Esther and Ruth and Mary, just to name a few, you will see that they each had, they were each presented with what is called a Kairos moment. In this scripture, the Greek word for time here is not chronos time that we are used to, like seconds and minutes and days and years. It is referring to an opportune moment, a passing instant where an opening appears, an opportune time, a season of favor to tip the scales in their favor. It is often said that favor isn't fair, but it is just. What God revealed to me is that like these women, Every single one of us here today has been given or will be given a Kairos moment because God is no respecter of persons. And the scripture did say that time and chance happeneth to them all. But though we are given opportunities, we don't always take them. And this is mainly because often we don't recognize them. Now, I decree and declare today over your life, over my life, that we will never miss another opportunity to gain access to abundance. That we will learn to recognize and seize these opportunities to overflow. These opportunities these opportunities are chance encounters for us, but not luck as the world might term it. Rather, it is speaking of a divine, well-planned moment by God himself. A divine opportunity is what God creates to move us from a place of obscurity into the light, a place from lack to plenty, from scarcity to abundance. And once we dwell in that land long enough, we will experience that overflow so that we can be a blessing to others. Now, in the word opportunity, what I want to do here today is, first and foremost, I want to reintroduce you to the word opportunity. In the word opportunity, the first part of the word is op, O-P. This is a military term, and it's short for operations. Ops are a set of planned actions for a particular purpose. When a divine opportunity is presented to us, it is because God in his sovereignty has strategically planned and shifted and manipulated time and events to bring us into our Kairos moment. And then there is port. Port is a harbor an entryway, an opening. In spiritual terms, it's a portal. This is our way in. This is the door. The access to access anything beyond our natural resources and abilities, a portal must be open. And there is, and this is never by our doing. To even gain access to salvation, 
the door of Jesus had to be made available to us. In John chapter 10, verse 7, Jesus says, I am the door. In, in John 14, 6, he said, I am the way. For those of you who have not yet been saved, I pray for you today that you utilize that door of Jesus that has been flung wide open for all to enter in because of God's sovereignty and of God's goodness. Because this is not because of our, of our own human ability. It is God who gives us access to abundance, to overflow. Now I know that there is another P in there, but for today that P is silent. And then there is unity. Unity is the state of being united and or joined as a whole. It is here all the resources necessary come together to merge for that one purpose. Opportunities always have resources associated with them, but they are not readily visible or accessible. To see them, we must, to see them, much less utilize them, we must go through the opening. We all want access. We all want resources, but we will never get them on this side of the Jordan. We must cross over and enter into the portal through faith. We can't get the supplies and remain where we are. On one side is promise. On the other side is the provision. Now, I believe for us to be able, and this is what God dropped in my spirit, for us to be able to utilize these divine opportunities, there are four things that we must have. The first is self-care. Today is Wellness Sunday. And... We are doing this because we're encouraging people to take care of themselves, especially our women. We all know we can't serve people from an empty cup, correct? And I will take it a step further and say that we can't experience overflow if our vessels are damaged through neglect. For a lot of us, Words like busy, tired, and stressed have become part of our daily vocabulary. We know we need proper sleep, a good diet, exercise, and hydration. But do we really prioritize self-care? Do we slow down and meditate and journal to stay grounded? What about taking time to enjoy the things that really make life abundant, like love, and joy, and laughter, peace, contentment, and even philanthropy? We need to remember that abundance is not just in material things, but it is in the richness and quality of our lives. Some people are rich, but are not wealthy. True wealth and abundance comes from those things that are most meaningful and purposeful for us. And I believe when we pack, we crack. When we pack too many things into our daily lives, we end up injured and cracked. And cracking creates the inability to maintain things and causes waste. It can be counterproductive. We might seem to gain on one end, but to the detriment of something else. 
do our gains really justify our losses? We cannot keep adding without subtracting. Even the good things must be weighed in the balance against purpose. I mean, what a blessing to be young, black, and gifted. What an ego boost to hear your name on people's lips and to be in demand after all, to whom much is given, much is required, right? But I believe that the much more that is required of us is to exercise wisdom. I used to think that I was superwoman, da -da -da, with the big S on my chest. I can do all things until I started to burn out and my health and my relationships started to take a turn for the worst. So I had to take stock and make some changes in my life. See, the reality is I ain't got no superpowers. I can't fly. I'm human. And I have limitations that must be acknowledged. I can't be all things to all people. I am not roti. I can't make everybody happy. What happened? You guys don't look like roti? Everybody loves roti. Half your life gone if you don't like roti. Anyways, so I have decided to hang up my cape. I don't want to be superwoman anymore. What I want to be is a victorious woman. A woman who is intentional about living a life of purpose. And doing the things that supports that. Now don't get me wrong. There are times when we will need to make temporary sacrifices, but this should never be the norm. What does all of this have to do with opportunity, you may ask? Well, first, we need to be around to be given opportunities, correct? And secondly, we need to be able, we need to be ready and able physically mentally, emotionally, and spiritually to answer when opportunity knocks. Second thing we need is discernment. This is the ability to judge well, to grasp and comprehend what is obscure. It is the act of perceiving something to make inspired choices. We will stand before many doors in our lives, but we must discern the ones we should walk through and the ones we should walk away from. It is okay to say no sometimes. In economics, there is a term that is referred to as opportunity cost. An opportunity cost is the potential gain that we lose when we choose to do one thing over the other. Because you see, we can't be in two places at the same time. So when you choose to go this way, understand that you're losing an opportunity. So it costs you something over here. You're losing the opportunity to do this. So if you waste your time and your talents and your ability pursuing and doing things that are purposeful, then you waste your opportunity to do those things that are purposeful and meaningful in your life. Your time is important. So discernment is crucial because opportunities also are often camouflaged. And they tend to come clothed in challenges. Opportunities and challenges are a couple 
<laughs> where you see one, you tend to see the other. Where opportunity exists, a challenge is present, and vice versa. Have you ever prayed for an opportunity, but what seems to come is opposition or a challenge that makes you wonder if God even understood you in the first place? But God in an infinite wisdom knows that challenges are the perfect opportunity to stretch or limits to embrace and enter something new. Here are some typical examples because it's one thing to be told that we need to have discernment, but what does that really look like? How can we increase in discernment? And one thing I think that is crucial for us to understand is spiritual maturity is the pathway to real discernment. Therefore, we must grow spiritually in our relationship with God so that he can guide us and help us navigate the terrain because he knows what's behind every door. Secondly, we need to learn to slow down and give ourselves some quiet time to meditate, and to think without distractions. Also, we need to use our heads. Seek knowledge and information through research and also through the wisdom of others who are versed on the subject. You don't have to stay in ignorance and try to guess and figure it out. And after using your head, and you weighed all the pros and cons, pay attention to what's going on in your own heart. How is your heart being moved? Are you being attracted or are you being repulsed? Do you feel more at peace with one thing more than the other? Remember, God wants us to use both our heads and our heart. Thirdly, vision. Vision is absolutely important. And discernment hinges on you having, you and I having a vision. The opportunity we decide to seize should support our vision for our lives. A vision gives us an end goal, a destination so our path becomes clearer and well-defined. It sets expectations, it brings focus, and it delivers meaning and purpose because it answers the why and delivers and drives the decision-making in our lives. We are better able to discern doors when we have a vision, but sadly, just about everyone has a resume, but only a handful of people have a written vision. Both are necessary to facilitate opportunities, but a resume is historical. It's what you have done before. A vision is futuristic. It speaks about your potential. And Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 2 to 3 says that we need to write the vision and make it plain upon tablets. So I encourage you today to sit down, take the time, pray and to seek God's guidance and together chart a course for your life. And fourth, we need Courage. We all heard it said before, having not done all to stand, we then need to stand. People often say, if someone will just give me the opportunity, give me a chance. No, my friend, an opportunity is what you are given. A chance is what you must take. And this takes guts. This takes faith. Opportunities are fleeting. 
they, they tend to just wave at you from afar off, yoo-hoo, and then run around a corner to see if you will come after them. Often, we don't have the luxury of dragging our foot to decide. This can lead to missed opportunities. Well, at least for you. And I say this because I don't know about you, but have you ever felt bitter and disappointed after seeing somebody else benefit from something that should have been yours? But you lack the belly to go after it. And you missed your opportunity. You missed your moment. Yeah, I know. There's no use crying over spilt milk. But what we can do from here is to learn to recognize so when other opportunities come our way, and they will come, that we're able to take the chance. See, opportunities speak a language, and they speak in the language of time and risk. You will never feel prepared. We will never feel prepared enough because opportunities are designed to stretch us beyond what we're comfortable with. And the plans will never be completely laid out for you. One of the most common excuses believers have is that we want to know without a shadow of a doubt that this is what God has for us. Now, this sounds good on the surface, but the reality is faith is risky business. And because we fear the unknown, we procrastinate long after God has given us the green light. Because we fear, because change frightens us. But we must be open to new ideas, new ways of doing things, new people, new experiences. To help me with this, God took me to Genesis chapter 20. Because again, it's, it's one thing to say something. It's another thing to learn how to do it. How, how do I apply this? How do I do this? So God took me to the story of Abraham, Sarah, and King Abimelech. When Abraham tried to pass off Sarah as his sister... So Abimelech thought that she was fair game and took her to be his wife. He had all intentions of sleeping with her, but God, but God will not allow it. God intervened. God kept him from sinning in this way. And if he can do it, for Abimelech, he can surely do it for me, and he can surely do it for you. Because our God is a loving and merciful God. He knows that if our desire is to do his will, our desire is to live right, do you think God will let you walk into a catastrophe? No, sir. After we have sought him, and we feel in our spirit that we have our marching orders. We must move forward in faith and trust that if we misstep, he will course correct. Either through speaking to us or putting obstacles in our way. God will find a way if we are on the wrong path. God will find a way to stop us in our tracks. You best believe. And he will be that light unto our feet. And the, the lamp unto our feet and the light unto our path. So we must not delay. When God says to move, move. Because remember that there are resources that are attached to that opportunity. Now, 
we all hear that, you know, you can make up for lost time. You might be able to make up for lost time, but I guarantee you, you would never have that same opportunity or the resources that came with that particular opportunity. So we stand to gain, to lose a lot. So we must move in faith and confidence on God's word. And I believe today that this is, this moment right now, is too a Kairos moment. It is a moment in time where the portals are open. And all we need to do is go through them. Go through it. The Holy Spirit is here today. And for those of us who, for those of you who have not yet made the opportunity to say yes to God, you feel that tugging, you've been weighing it in the balance. Now is the time. He says when you hear his voice, harden not your heart because we never know when this opportunity will present itself again yeah you we might think that we have time but that time might come 20 years down the road 30 years down the road where will we be so I encourage you today if you are in this house and you feel the move of God, if you feel God is calling you into a relationship with him, the portal is open. This is your time. This is your opportune moment to experience that abundant life that he is talking about. Won't you come today? Won't you move on faith yes it might be a bit risky you don't know what the other end looks like you might be worrying about all the things that could happen but we need to remember that our God is able he is able to keep us he is able to fix us I encourage you today to step out on faith and receive what God has presented to you today. And what about, bless God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I believe there is someone else here today. I believe God is speaking, and I pray that you will cooperate with the Spirit and get out of your seats and take that step of faith and come forward. The Spirit is here. The Spirit is waiting. And we have ministers here to pray with you. And what about us as believers who want a greater discernment, who want to be able to never miss another opportunity that God presents. Hallelujah. God, I thank you today. Because we too need to squeeze everything out of every opportunity God sends our way. Won't you come? Won't you come today?
this moment. We thank you that your word has gone forth. Thank you, Lord. And we thank you that it will accomplish what you have set for it to accomplish. It will start a movement. It will take seed and root in our hearts and will bring about fruit. Thank you for those that have decided today to trust you for salvation. We thank you and we know that they are safe and secure in your hands. We pray God that you will surround them with the right people to speak into them, to pour into them, to encourage them. And we pray that they will find a good church home they are our babies. We would love them to grow here and to be nurtured here. But God, wherever you see fit, just make sure we know that you will never lose anyone who comes to you. God, we thank you for your children. We thank you, Lord God, that our spiritual eyes are being opened to opportunities that you will present to us. We thank you, Lord God, that we will increase in discernment, that we will have a vision for our lives. We thank you, Lord God, that we will exercise self-care. And when that time comes for us to move, we will take courage and we will take the chance. Because you are backing us up. We cannot fail. We will not fail. You will never allow us to fail. And on that confidence, we rest today. Knowing you who have begun a good work in us yes. is able to keep us from falling and is able to take us all the way home. Yes. Thank you for your love. Thank you, Thank you for your grace. Thank you. Thank you for this divine opportunity to overflow. God bless you all. God bless you all. And I just want to quickly remind again to come back out on Wednesday night where we will have a powerful time of prayer and healing. Does anyone need prayer? Does anyone need prayer? I can't get enough prayer. I don't know about you. So come out, join us, and let's agree together. Let's pray together. And ladies, don't forget, on your way out, please be sure to stop by our doctors and get checked out and receive that free gift that we have in store for you. Right? Amen. God bless you. Thank you so much and enjoy the rest of your day.